we present a differentiable lens, compound lens search over glass surfaces and materials for object detection. Optical systems are commonly designed in isolation using simplified optical performance criteria. Conversely, computer vision models are often trained on off-the-shelf image datasets without regard for how the images were acquired. In end-to-end -end design, we optimize the optical design specifically for a given task to extract the most relevant information from the scene and train the downstream model jointly so that it adapts to the optics. In this work, we first introduce an accurate image formation model for conventional refractive lenses. Then, we devise a joint optimization strategy to optimize all lens variables, including glass materials, without harming stability or manufacturability. Our method can turn simple lenses, such as the ones depicted here, into compelling candidates for low-cost automotive object detection. Let us now dive deeper into the approach, which we split into three different aspects. The image formation model, the strategy for tackling a joint design and optimization, and the experiments relative to object detection. We begin with the image formation model. In joint design tasks, there are three main approaches for image simulation models. Many works on joint design model the optics with a single diffractive optical element, which makes it suitable for simulation using a wave optics approach. This method, however, is inadequate for compound refractive optics. Another approach is to train a proxy model to output the PSFs of the optical system by using commercial lens design software to do the optical simulation. That, however, comes with a cumbersome training and validation step that cannot handle the whole design space and needs to be repeated for every lens configuration. In this work, we favor an exact retracing approach where we directly implement retracing equations based on Snell's law. Our lens simulation model allows us to simulate the capture of a virtual scene based on the actual lens parameters. It consists of three phases, each based on exact retracing operations. First, we estimate the geometrical PSFs for different portions of the virtual scene. To do so, we initialize rays at the entrance pupil of the lens system, propagate them using Snell's law up to the image plane, then integrate them using kernel density estimation. We rotate, rescale, and resample the PSFs to fill the PSF grid, then proceed with a spatially varying convolution. We apply a reaming correction step to make sure that the rays accurately hit the outer edge of the aperture stop. Second, we estimate the relative illumination at different field values, then multiply the illumination map pixel-wise with the image. Third, we evaluate the distortion at different field angles, and simulate it on the image with a differentiable warping operation. Next, we discuss the optimization subproblem. As a way to circumvent the difficulties of lens design optimization in an end-to-end -end design context, previous works have only attempted to optimize the lens design variables over a subset of the design space. In our work, we do not introduce artificial boundaries to limit the design space, we optimize over all spacings and surface profiles. And most importantly, unlike previous works, we meet the challenge of optimizing and selecting the best glass materials among a given glass catalog. To optimize all design variables freely despite the noisy gradients coming from the downstream task, we add design constraints and auxiliary losses, stabilize the process by solving for both the focal length and back focal length, and handle glass materials with quantized continuous glass variables. In the joint design process, we wish to find the best set of available materials for the downstream task. To achieve this, we introduce quantized continuous glass variables. We employ auxiliary glass variables to explore the solution space, but always replace them with available materials using the gradient pass-through operation to make it differentiable. Our solution completely removes unfeasible materials from the equation, therefore avoiding many difficulties associated with glass material optimization. We now apply our image formation model and joint design strategy to the downstream task of object detection. We consider three lens configurations in our experiment. A standard refractive doublet made of two elements, a quick triplet made of three elements that is generally suitable for moderate aperture and field of view imaging, and a tester lens that is similar to a quick triplet with one additional lens element. 
We design all lenses using the same specifications, notably a f number of 2 and a field of view of 50 degrees. We deliberately study simple lenses with only 2 to 4 elements for two reasons. One, they can enable low cost automotive object detection, and two, they make an interesting study because their few degrees of freedom, combined with the challenging specifications, prevents the correction of geometrical aberrations. Our object detection experiments aim to quantify the benefit of the joint design pipeline. We validate the proposed method on the RetinaNet object detector using the BDD100K dataset for automotive object detection. We first consider the setting where the image quality is close to ideal by conducting object detection on the original dataset images. This gives us an approximate upper bound for object detection performance in terms of AP, which stands for average performance. Next, we used this pre-trained model, but evaluated this time by simulating realistic aberrations on the dataset images. When both the object detection model and lens parameters are frozen, we observe a strong decrease in object detection performance, especially for the doublet lens, which suffers more from aberrations due to its few degrees of freedom. Our method allows us to fine-tune the object detector as to take the actual aberrations of the lens into account. Doing so, we alleviate most of the drop in object detection performance. As a further step, we start once again with the object detector that was pre-trained with the ideal optics, and this time we optimize not only the object detector, but the lens as well. Using our joint lens optimization strategy, the lenses remain in a manufacturable state during most or all of the optimization process, despite all lens variables allowed to move freely. At the end of the optimization process, the average spot size of each lens is similar or worse than at the beginning, but the object detection performance is increased. Using the lens and object detector that were trained jointly on the BDD100K dataset, we validate that the improvements in object detection performance carry over to other datasets such as Udacity without retraining. We generally observe larger improvements in detection performance when artificially increasing the image resolution by a factor of 2 to simulate a higher resolution sensor. As we can see from the layouts of the optimized and baseline lenses overlaid on each other, the overall structure of each lens remains similar. However, the distribution of optical performance over the field changes to maximize the detection accuracy where most of the objects are located. For more information, please visit our project page.